Hello. People ask me if I'm an angel. I tell them angel means messenger. Yes, I do have a message, but I am not come down from heaven. I'm a human messenger, but my message comes down from heaven. In 1977, I was lifted off the earth and I went into a cloud. And there I saw Jesus, Yahushua. He told me everything prophesied about him would come to pass. He told me to stay out of the churches. What passes for his church on the earth is not his church. And he talked to me about translations. So since the 70s, I have been studying Greek, Aramaic, Hebrew, Coptic. Um, I've studied Latin. I've studied all the various languages that translated his words into English. Now, during that time of translation, I specifically focused on the words of Jesus because he said, my words are spirit and life. So anything that lines up with the words of Yahushua, I accept that as scripture. Whether it's in the Old Testament or the New. But I'll have to tell you what I discovered. Many, many things in both the New Testament and the Old Testament contradict Jesus. I was so perplexed, I thought, how could people misunderstand and the gospel and the words of Jesus and even contradict him, his own early followers like Paul and Second Peter and whoever wrote the book of Revelation and Polycarp and all the church fathers how far they went away from what Jesus taught so quickly. Well, I am now 72 years old but when I was around 70 years old I suddenly saw something I had never seen in the scriptures that answers the problem of why people misunderstood Jesus. John said, John the Baptist, I baptize with water, but he, Yeshua, Yahoshua, will baptize with spirit. Now my study of the word spirit has in English, it can be um, your spirit of your body, it can be your breath, can be the wind or the air. We even talk about liquor as spirits. Now in Greek and in Hebrew there is a word that we don't find in English for spirit and that is angel. So going back and looking at what Jesus said about baptizing with the spirit and what John said about baptizing with the spirit, I discovered that if you put the word angel there you get a completely different understanding of the gospel. So Jesus wants to baptize us with an angel. Now a lot of people say, oh the Spirit, that means the second person of God, the Holy Spirit. If you read what John says in John 16, 13, it cannot be God because it says the Spirit, and Jesus calls it the Spirit of Truth, Numa Aletheia, the Spirit can only repeat what it hears. It cannot speak on its own authority. It cannot speak its own words. That means the Spirit is a messenger, an angel. When you realize what, what that is and what that's all about, then you go and you read in the book of Acts how people were baptized into the baptism of John. Paul went to Ephesus. He found 12 people there. And he said, are you baptized? They said, yeah, we had John's baptism, water baptism. He laid hands on them and he prayed for them to receive the angel baptism. When Peter and John heard that the Samaritans had been baptized into John's baptism of water, they went up to Samaria and they laid hands on them and they received the angel of the truth. So I am now preaching the angel of the truth as your adoption into the family of El Shaddai. That's the old Hebrew word for God. So I have, a, I have a painting that I've done to help illustrate it when I take it out on the street. So the first thing you see when you look at the painting you see 
some images. And I explain these paintings to people this way. When people ask me what I'm doing dressed up as an angel, I ask them, I say something like this. Uh, do you agree that life is like a school and we're here to learn lessons? How to make good choices? And most people say yes. And then I say, well, look. Over here you see the system of the school. At the top you see the father, El Shaddai. He's the superintendent of the school. Going down, you see Yeshua, Yahushua, Jesus. He's the teacher. He's the principal. Not the teacher. He's the principal of all the schools. He makes sure everybody's got the curriculum and they're doing the right thing. The third person in this picture is an angel, the angel of the truth. The angel is the teacher. For some odd reason, <laughs> the translators all call this the comforter or the helper, but it says he shall teach you. He's a teacher. Now, I shouldn't say he because angels don't have genders. It is a teacher. It will teach you everything that Jesus spoke. It will explain the difficult parables, it will explain the riddles, it will explain the dark sayings. The difficult sayings will help you to understand the end times. He's certainly not a comforter because he's going to rebuke the world and reprove the world of sin. You're not going to be comforting people. He's going to be showing them what's coming unless they become part of the family of El Shaddai. And the way to be part of the family is to receive the baptism. So Jesus, he had a two-phase mission. His first mission was to come explain the new Torah, the new covenant with God, and he paid a ransom for our sins at the cross, his second phase of his ministry after he was ascended to heaven from Bethany was to come and baptize people with the angel of the truth. So here you have Jesus, here you have the angel, baptizing people with the angel of the truth. Now in this painting you'll see a picture of me standing off to the side and I tell people, I'm on the school maintenance staff. I'm the plumber. I make sure the water is flowing from the Father to the Son, to the Spirit of the Truth, to you, the students. Once you receive that indwelling Spirit, you don't need any man to teach you. You don't have to go to church or Bible studies. It says it will teach you all things necessary for salvation. You read the New Covenant, it says, No man will teach his brother anymore about God, because the words of the message will be written in your heart. Right there, in your heart. You want to know what the Bible says? The New Testament, what the words of Jesus said? They'll be written in your heart. I believe in the church of two or three, where two or three people are gathered together and they're talking about Yehoshua and the things of God. That's the church. The words are in your heart. Um, everything you need is in your heart. Once you get this angel baptism, then you're adopted into the family of God. And it's pretty hard to get unadopted. I'll tell you the truth. It's very hard to get unadopted. And on the final day, the last day, six times Jesus says, on the last day I will call all the dead out of the grave. Those who've been adopted will go to the Father's house and they will be transformed from mortals into immortals they will live as spirit children of El Shaddai in his new age and in his new covenant, in his new heavenly kingdom. But the minute you receive the angel baptism, you're in the earthly heavenly kingdom now. I know that sounds funny, earthly heaven. The kingdom of El Shaddai is in heaven, but he has an earthly kingdom. Once you're in his family as an adopted child, you're in that kingdom now. You have all the kingdom benefits, all the kingdom blessings. And the greatest thing is, your sins are remembered no more. Wow. Is that you're going to stop sinning? I believe you could. I'm trying to. I haven't succeeded. Because Jesus said, go thy way and sin no more. So I'm trying my best. But it doesn't matter. Once you're in the new covenant, he says, their sins I will remember no more. So your sins are taken care of. You don't have to go to your grave in fear of hell. Because you've already got the kingdom inside you. You're inside the kingdom. 
You're an adopted child of the Father who loves you so much. So, if you've never received the angel baptism, I'm going to have you pray with me now. It's a short prayer, but it's the most powerful prayer you'll ever say. El Shaddai, Father in Heaven, please send Yehoshua, Jesus, to baptize me with the Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. Thank you. Amen.